In this report, I will explain why Americans, Canadians, and Europeans and other favored nations are being denied entry into Mexico. Mexican authorities have also started stopping Americans and Canadians randomly in tourist areas and asking for proof they are in Mexico legally. After I explain what is happening in Mexico, I will give you my top tips on how to gain entry into Mexico for the full 180 day tourist visa or tourist stamp and how to not get detained or deported if you're stopped at random by Mexican immigration authorities while in Mexico. Okay, so what's happening in Mexico? Mexico has suddenly become aggressive in enforcing its immigration laws. Here are some of the stories Americans and Canadians and Europeans have been begun reporting on social media. But first, I'm not telling you that these stories are all 100% true. I think a few of them are either exaggerating the facts or not telling the whole story. But many people that have been coming to Mexico for years expect everything to be the same. So when an official starts asking them questions, a few get angry at the official and start saying stupid things that don't help their case. A few raise their voice and say things like, you can't ask me for a return ticket proof. I've been coming to Mexico for years and nobody's ever asked me for proof of a return ticket or an onward flight. Or I've been to Mexico 20 times and immigration has never asked me for proof of where I'm staying. So at least some of these stories are because people are, were rude, angry, or arrogant when they were addressed by the immigration official. Immigration officials all over the world have discretion about who they let enter the country and for how long. So it's a very bad idea to be rude to them. But I doubt more than 10% of the cases I read about online are purely because of rudeness. So this is not the only reason some people are being treated differently. The fact is things have changed in Mexico and you need to be aware of how to handle yourself differently. You can no longer assume things are the same as the last time you entered Mexico. Let me explain. There are just too many of these reports popping up on social media lately on a daily basis. So you need to know the, the new dance when you're standing in front of a Mexican immigration official. My goal is to throw enough cold water in your face so you will take my suggestions or ideas more seriously so you'll have a better chance. You need to get ready in case these problems happen to you. First, I will give you four sample problems that have been reported by many different people and then I will tell you how to increase your chances of getting what you want from the immigration official when they are about to do things to you. Uh, story number one, an American woman that had never been to Mexico before tried to enter Mexico with her printed proof of a return flight to the USA 35 days later. She even had proof printed out of where she was staying during the 35 days she was visiting Mexico. The immigration official only gave her 30 days to be in Mexico, even though her return flight was in 35 days. That is a worst case scenario. I will explain later why. I have to, st I have to say, I doubt, again, all of these cases that were reported on social media are the full story, but there are cases where an immigration official will refuse entry if all, uh, if all of that is true. Do you know what they are? I'll answer that later in the report, but I'll share a few more stories first. Story number two, an American left Mexico a few days before their 180 day visa stamp expired. They did a visa run to the USA for about seven days and then returned to Mexico to get another 180 day visa stamp. The immigration official only gave them seven days upon re-entry into Mexico. This story is more believable believable for reasons I'll explain in a moment. Story number three, a Canadian was stopped randomly in Mexico by an immigration official. They were detained and locked up by the official because they did not have the original documents on them that were legally, that they were legally in Mexico, i.e. their passport with a stamp and their FFM document. More on that in a second. Since they were unable to prove they were in Mexico legally, they were deported back to Canada. This story is believable. Mexico, like any other country, will deport people that overstay the time they are given upon entry. But if you've overstayed your visa, I have some tips for you to try to get out of trouble without being detained. Coming up. Story number four. An American has lived in Mexico for several years by doing visa runs every 180 days. They tried to do a visa run recently and were only given 14 days 
to enter Mexico to collect their personal possessions and then go back uh, to America. If you, if you read on expat social media, you'll find many stories like this that have been shared over the last 60 days. I only share a few example accounts that I can use to share my tips about how to avoid negative experiences when entering Mexico or being stopped and deported uh, by immigration officials once you're inside. Until the last few months, Americans, Canadians, Europeans, and others from favored countries were routinely grant, granted re-entry into Mexico with visa-free 180-day stamps over and over again. Until the last 60 days, Mexican immigration officials rarely reduced the number of visa-free days they stamped in your passport upon entry. In the past, you also heard very few stories on social media about foreign visitors being stopped on the street and being asked for proof of their legality in Mexico. That has become common now. In the past, Mexican immigration officials often paid very little attention, even if you had re-entered many times for back-to-back 180-day visa runs to nearby countries, whether the U.S. or Guatemala or other countries. Uh, people from favored nations would just leave Mexico and re routinely re-enter Mexico after a few days and get another 180 days uh, visa-free, with very few exceptions from immigration officials. But things have changed over the last 60 days. If you start investigating these kinds of troubling stories, you'll find that they're happening all over and over again to Americans, Canadians, Europeans, and other favored nations trying to re-enter Mexico. Um, others say nothing has changed. Everything is the same. Other people from favored nations are reporting that everything is the same when they re-enter Mexico. They're still getting their 180-day visa run stamps when they uh, re-entered Mexico in the last 60 days. Some people are commenting and saying these stories are just BS. They have not been stopped randomly, and they don't know anybody that's been stopped randomly. If they are right, then nothing has changed. But if you ask Mexican immigration agents, they'll tell you that things have changed and you'll need to learn the new dance. Uh, top 10 tips for entering Mexico. So here are my tips for how to reduce the chances you'll be shortchanged on your 180 days. These tips are not 100% guaranteed. They'll just increase the chance you'll be able to stay longer in Mexico on each visit. Okay, number one, you need a return or onward flight now. And I mean everyone, even favored nations. I've been to Mexico at least 20 times in my life. I've only been asked for a return ticket maybe twice in 40 years. That has changed. Officials have always had the right to ask for it. They just rarely did in the past. If you're trying to get a 180-day visa tourist stamp entering Mexico, you need proof of a return ticket or an onward flight leaving Mexico to show the immigration officials. This is proof to them that you are not intending to overstay your 180-day stamp. I recommend printing it out so you can hand it to them if necessary. There's only one exception. If you have temporary or permanent Mexican residency, uh, you'll not need a return or onward flight. But everyone else needs this now. It doesn't matter what country you're from. It is possible you won't be asked for it, but I wouldn't fly to any country without it anymore. Before I tell you the second thing you need to enter Mex Mexico, I want you to understand that the world has changed since the pandemic started. Immigration officials all over the world now are taking their jobs more seriously. Make sure to watch my video, Travel Warning, How to Restart International Travel Before You Jump on an Airplane, No Matter Where You're Going in the World. Link provided. Okay, the second thing they're looking for is proof of where you're staying. In the past, I was rarely ever asked for proof of where I was staying when I entered Mexico. I just filled out the entry card I was given on the airplane and walked up to the Mexican immigration officials. Um, but last year, when I flew into Mexico City, uh, that was in um, December, actually it was before that, it was September of 2020, uh, they asked me where I was staying. I was following my previous post-pandemic travel warning that I mentioned before, so I had it on me. I had proof of where I was staying. So don't be surprised if they ask. They're looking for holes in your story. If you have proof of where you're staying, for the entire period you're asking for, plus a return ticket on the date it ends, uh, the stay ends, you're increasing your chances of getting the full 180 days. After I'm finished telling you all of my tips about getting into Mexico, I'll tell you how to supercharge your chances of getting the full 180 days. 
Okay, next tip. Complete your FMM card with 180 days uh, in the, on the card. So complete your FFM card before you fly to Mexico. You can go to one of the private websites to create and print your FMM card, but they are likely to charge you a little more than the official website link provided. If, the, if that first official website is down, try this other one. There's links to both of them on the web page. Um, on, on the official website, you can select an icon to switch to English or whatever language you understand. You can also right click in Google Chrome and translate from Spanish to English if you prefer. After completing the online form, you must print it and hand it to the immigration official upon arrival in Mexico. Some people say you're guaranteed to get the full 180 days if the printed card you hand the immigration official has the full 180 days on it as you filled it out. But I don't agree. I believe the official still has the discretion to change the number of days on the form. I just think that by bringing the completed FFM card uh, with the 180 days already filled in, you just make it easier for the official to just stamp the document without reducing the number of days. But they can change it. So smile and answer questions politely when you approach the official. Okay, you also need a complete Mexican health questionnaire and QR code. Again, there's links to all this. There's no negative COVID test or vaccine requirement to enter Mexico presently, but you're required to complete the health questionnaire before boarding your flight to Mexico. You register yourself here, link provided, then complete the questionnaire. You can then download the QR code onto your smartphone and scan it at the gate for flights within Mexico. You should also print a copy so you can show it to the airlines when boarding your flight to Mexico. Okay, now it's time to learn how to supercharge your chances of getting the full 180 days when you're entering Mexico. And after that, I'll tell you how to get by an immigration official if you're stopped uh, as you're just walking around Mexico. Okay, supercharge your chances of getting the full 180 days. Now, I'm not telling you that you will not get the full 180 days if you do everything that I've listed above. The immigration officials have almost complete discretion in deciding the number of days to give you, and nobody knows exactly what will work with any given agent that you're standing in front of. The rules are changed, and they're not in writing, so nobody knows for sure. The only things we know for sure is that they are deciding whether or not to shortchange you on the number of days when, they, when you're in front of them. If they, if they believe you and they trust what you're saying, they're more likely to stamp your FFM as is without changing the number of days. So they're not just listening to what you say and reading your documents and looking up your past travels listed in their computer system and the other stamps in your passport. They're also watching your mannerisms and deciding if they believe you. If they believe you, uh, you are a good risk to do what you say. Your chances are better to get the full 180 days. But if they think you are feeding them a pile of crap, they are likely to shortchange the number of days they give you or deny you entry at all. When you walk up to the Mex Mexican immigration officer, there are two things you have to get right. One is the backstory of why you're asking for a 180 day visa. The other is making sure the agent is clear about how many days you want to stay in Mexico. You need to have a small piece of paper that has the following information in Spanish so you are not denied the correct number of days just because the agent didn't read your documents clearly. Why do you need this? An English couple just flew into Cancun airport with a return ticket in seven weeks. The immigration official asked how long they would be in Mexico and the, the couple answered seven weeks. The official stamped their passport for seven days. Many suspect this was just an error or of translation. When they visited immigration, they were told official decision stands. They would not change it to seven weeks. So they only got seven days in Mexico, even though they had the whole trip planned for seven weeks. So make sure to point to this sentence on the document when the agent asks you how long you'll be in Mexico, then hand them your return flight and point at the date that you're exiting. So in, it's, it will be in both Spanish and English. Um, in English, here's what it says. My flight leaving Mexico is in 62 days. I fly out of Mexico on February 13th, 2022. May I please have at least 62 days? 
So Google Translate will do this, translate it for you. So you show them in very simple sentences how long you're asking for it. So there isn't a, just a simple translation error. Okay, so what are these red flags they may be looking for that you are not on the up and up? These are the theories you will read online that people have, but nobody knows for sure. One is theories of tourist visa abuse. The agents are trying to determine maybe that you're not a tourist. They look at your past history of coming and going from Mexico, and they decide that you are actually living in Mexico, but you are calling yourself a tourist in your entry documents. You are just doing visa runs every 180 days, so you can avoid getting or applying for residency in Mexico. If that is what you're doing, you may eventually run into an immigration official that decides to force you to apply for residency in Mexico. They can decide to deny you entry if you are an egregious example of using visa runs instead of applying for residency. Or if they are more polite, they could just give you a few weeks entry into Mexico, which they know you're likely to use to gather your personal possessions and go back to your home country and apply for residency from your home country. Or they may decide to just stamp you for another 180 days. It could be that there is some kind of secret policy inside Mexico immigration that only a few unlucky people get eight, uh, per agent per month are denied the 180 days. This is just conjecture on my part but just five or 10 per month would get everyone talking about it on social media, like what is happening now. And a bunch of people would finally go apply for residency. Bad news spreads like wildfire on social media. So this could get more people applying for residency in Mexico. By the way, applying for residency in Mexico is no big deal if you fall into this category. I'll put a link below to a video I did with a friend that just got his residency in Mexico so you can learn more about it. Okay, theories of working in Mexico without a work visa. If you're not retired on a pension, but are younger and closer to normal working age, the Mexican immigration official may wonder if you're planning on working in Mexico on a retirement, uh, and working in Mexico uh, rather than just being a tourist. Mexico has no digital nomad visa yet. Uh, immigration official might wonder how you are paying for your living expenses in Mexico. They may wonder if you're working under the table for a Mexican company taking a job from a local. So you should think about what you would say if the conversation goes in that direction. They may not be direct about it. They may just ask what kind of work you do. The best policy is always to tell the truth. So think about how you would reduce their fear that you are in Mexico taking a local's job. If you're staying free at a timeshare resort, for example, that could raise some questions in their mind. So just think this one through. So how do you supercharge your chances of getting a full 180 days? Be prepared to tell a cohesive story about why you're coming to Mexico for another 180 days. For example, we spent about 12 months over the last three years in Mexico. We were touring around Mexico trying to find the best place to retire. So if an official asked me why I needed 180 days if I were re-entering Mexico tomorrow, I would tell the truth. Over the last three years, we spent uh, 12 months and visiting about 25 cities in Mexico. We're not ready to move to Mexico yet. We want to visit our top three places in Mexico uh, for a little longer, maybe a few months each before making a final decision. Once we visited our top three places, we'll make a final decision whether we want to move to Mexico or the Philippines. We'll apply for residency after we make that decision. Without, without our backstory, they could just we, we look into the database and see all the time we've spent in Mexico over the last three years. Without me painting the picture for them, they could start thinking we're not really tourists, but we should be applying for residency at this time. But now, added by my backstory about why we already spent so much time here over the last few years, yet still want another 180-day 180 tour, tourist fee stamp, they're more likely to just stamp my FFM card for 180 days without making changes. Okay, here's another example. Let's say that I was, a, I was a Canadian snowbird that flew down to Mexico every year for the last 20 years and spent three to four of the coldest months in Mexico each year. When they look in my passport and see all the Mexico stamps, they're more likely to see that I am not actually a resident of Mexico. I'm just a Canadian that loves Mexico for a few winter months each year. 
So the way you supercharge your chances of getting another 180 days is to share the backstory of why you're just a tourist, even though you come to Mexico often. But if you're really just a resident of Mexico living in the same place and following the same pattern of visa runs every 180 days, you're going to have a hard time supercharging your story. Maybe it's time to apply for residency. My friend Charles in the video I link I gave above explains how to get residency. But what if you don't have the monthly income or money in the bank to apply for residency? Then I suggest you listen to my video about the other kinds of visas you might qualify for, such as student visas, work visas, charitable work visas, or business visas. Or consider jumping on the slow travel world highway and living on a tourist visa for the next 14 years, link provided. Okay, let's assume you're in Mexico now. How do you avoid getting deported? Random foreigner stops and checkpoints. When you are wandering around Mexico enjoying your time there, you might now be approached by Mexican immigration officials and asked for proof that you're entitled to still be in Mexico. This one is easy to solve. You must present them with your original copies of your passport and your original copy of your, your, your original stamped FFM card. Uh, so you must carry both on you at all times, unless you have residency, then your residency card, original residency card. Now I know what you're thinking. I thought you told me never to have my passport or other uh, legal documents like my FFM card or my legal residency card on my person as I wander around Mexico. I, I did, you're right, but that has changed. Uh, there are people randomly in Mexico, they're being stopped and they must have their originals in order to not be detained. Yes, you, you could probably, if you're detained, you could probably uh, figure out somebody that you could get to go back to your hotel room or your, your apartment or whatever you have to go get all your documents to prove that you're there legally, but that's a huge hassle. Uh, and I, it's not guaranteed that that will work or that or there's someone you trust to, to do that. And, uh, you might have more there, valuable there that you just don't want to lose. So yes, even though you rarely ever have more than some money and a bathing suit and flip-flops on your person as you enjoy yourself in Mexico, those days are over. You can no longer just carry a PDF copy of these documents and show them on your smart or show them on your smartphone screen. There are now fake documents all over Mexico, so the authorities are only accepting originals now. So buy yourself a waterproof bag and double bag your passport and your FFM card and a sandwich bag inside your waterproof bag and hang it around your neck. Yes, I know that most of you have not been stopped and that even some of you were able to just show copies when you were stopped recently, but that's no longer guaranteed like in the years past. You need the originals now, according to Mexican immigration authorities. Okay, finally, there's a regularization program now. If you've been in Mexico since 2019 and were stuck there during the pandemic and are currently are on an expired 180 day visa stamp, uh, you should contact a visa agent in Mexico and apply for the regular regularization program. This is a program that was started because people were not able to leave Mexico during the pandemic. The nice thing about this program is if you're able to qualify for it is you don't have to leave Mexico to become regularized. You can update all your paperwork so it's legal. Contact a qualified Mexican visa agent for more details. This is Dan of Vagabond Awake, the YouTube channel for Vagabond Buddha. The world is your home. What time will you be home for dinner? Hey, if you liked our video, please like, comment, or subscribe. Any of that would help our business. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Click the link in the notes below this video to get a copy of this content. Plus, grab a free copy of my ebook, How I Fired My Boss and Traveled the World for 13 Years. While you're there, check out our catalog of retired cheap reports all over the world and our hobby income course that we just released. Thanks so much.